You're right, guys. Uh, last video of the day, as there is way too much content for everybody to watch today, so I probably won't make anything tomorrow, just so that you guys can uh, catch up, and then we'll have a our uh, conference call on Wednesday. But um, I just wanted to go over something, um, looking at the euro dollar, and um, of course, you know, I want to be uh, long euros and short dollars, but. There's a level, right, that I'm very interested in, and it's this level here, yeah, this level right here. Uh, why am I interested in this? And it's because it's it's a CPR zone, and all CPR zones, just basically understanding CPR, is just um, understanding why there should be more demand and supply within this area. And we understand the psychology uh, of this right here. Now, when you get a you know an obvious level of uh, of resistance, and that would have been very very obvious to everybody. Um, nice ranging market as well. Yeah, the one twenty round number in uh, what what month was that? Is that December? Yeah, so December end of November, December was really the kind of line in the sand where a lot of traders, if you go back in the uh, in the group, you'll find, uh, and around that time, you'll find that 120 was the level that traders were interested in, right? So uh, let's go back to November. 125 was obviously the, 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 the level, but they were talking about... Um, uh, 120 right so you got the euro dollar range opens up near midpoint defining the 116 to 120 range yeah but faces stiff resistance near 119 capped by 20 uh 120 for now so um uh the 120 euro dollar is not an everlasting line in the sand of course it's not but it was a line you know that um was seen at the time as a definitely you know potentially reacting and this was what november the 16th so that was obviously a few days before so about a week or two before right so 16th of november posted it the 120 was almost like a target so once prices hit 120 and then produced this pretty much perfect pin bar yeah in the same way that it produced a nice pin bar here and reversed um, and traders really don't really know why they tend to get short here or, or say or short around here other than it's a technical pattern right they're not understanding that you shouldn't really want to be buying the uh the, the dollar in this in, in that scenario especially last year around that time now um what happens is is these traders will get short here yeah they will definitely get short there if they get short, they're, 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 their order is a sell. And then what happens to them? They get immediately caught. And this kind of stuff is what I love to see. This is like the perfect trade, yeah? So these guys will um, end up being um, uh, caught in their positions because of loss of urgent bias. Yeah, loss of urgent bias, which causes them to move and remove their stop losses. Lots of traders don't even trade with stop losses. Um, so you know they get dragged into hot water right deep water and this isn't just just retail traders this is you know ev all types of traders from um from institutional traders who will end up adding into trades and averaging down yeah into these levels to uh to the average retail trader who if they haven't blown their account by now um would have probably blown it but um loss aversion bias which basically means uh pain feels worse than gains feel good um, affects, afflicts everybody, it's a bias, it's a human bias, right? So these guys, whoever went short around here on this really nice pin bar, is really kind of caught in their position if they haven't blown up their account already. So here we are as prices start to come down into this area here. So um, the interesting bit is obviously, you know, we wanna be buyers of the uh, euro against the dollar, right? So there is an opportunity obviously here, um, depending on obviously the entry, etc. Um, all we do is our technical analysis. If it, if it reacts to that, then brilliant. If it doesn't, then we just move on to the next level. But this zone here is really nice in this this uh, 119, 120, and I think just below that in that demand zone is is is, is a brilliant level. Also, when you think about 
low to the high and prices haven't really kind of come back that's around fair value if that's an expensive area that's a bargain area then this is um an absolute you know you want to say absolute bargain but it's it's it, at least the first point of fair value that you want to get from the expensive to the to the cheap level so if price doesn't react because nobody knows where price is going to react i'm not in the in the in the business of predicting i don't know how other traders tend to forecast if that level goes and then you know that level should break and that level should break nobody knows because if that's the case then why don't you put 100 percent of your money on that trade if you if if, if what you're saying is is going to be true then why don't traders put 100 percent of their capital on that one trade they don't because they don't really know nobody knows all we do is we look at um the technical we look at our fundamental analysis first of all then when uh, when price comes down to a level that we that we're interested in then we say all right then is there an entry trigger yep and then we just risk a small amount on that trade idea and it pays us or it don't if it doesn't then we move on if it does we still move on um but the point is is that anyone who's caught in this area here right on this perfect pin bar this is that's the capture phase pain phase yeah because a lot of pain in here they risked one percent now they're down 10 20 30 percent 50 percent 80 percent they're gonna want some relief because the next trade uh the next uh uh best trade in a uh in a trader's uh, handbook i guess is either a small loss a break-even trade so if they are going through that whole period of of uh, of pain they're gonna want some pain relief and then that adds to the supply and demand equation right because if they sold here they have to do what to exit buy to exit which is demand if then traders who are shorting up here are looking at an area where price may want to reverse from where you've got resistance a bit of resistance support where are they taking profit somewhere in and around this level which is going to be more buying because they have to do the opposite they sold here they buy which is what more demand and then you've got new traders getting involved in this trade here like ourselves you don't really understand about capture pain relief and understanding the supply and demand equation at levels and we're just randomly buying you know support and resistance in and around this level more buying so there should be more demand at this 119 area looking at that being nice fair value lovely lovely trade if prices can get down there and again none of us know if prices get down here but fundamentally let's say for example the euro uh, someone comes out on the euro uh, some someone at the ecb says oh well you know we're going to be going into negative interest rates then pretty much all bets are off right there's no technical analysis that is going to stand in front of um of of fundamental analysis risk sentiment analysis and liquidity it just doesn't happen so um uh you know price action is not king it's literally just um uh just a ways and a means for us to identify buying and selling opportunities on a price chart and where obviously the most supply and demand may lie from a technical analysis perspective so i do like this 119.75 level as we come down into this uh, demand zone if we can get it that would be really really nice if not you know the first area to look for any kind of buy trades um are going to be in and around these zones here it looks like this one two well currently where we are so that's one two one fours and one two zero uh uh, one two zero five nine so six so i think between that area we should want to see hopefully some um some uh reversal and also as well uh match that up with uh the dxy so you know you want to see obviously a bit of um supply in and around these zones here so there's a bit of supply there uh it probably starts from around here really when i think about it so there is where supply is that's where we're looking at so again um if we can get some sort of uh, confluence and prices start to reverse around that area i think with dollar index i do actually like this area here for a, uh, a reversal so if prices can actually come up even further and then start to 
reverse, then that's where I am looking at. And it's for the exact same reason, um, which I'm not gonna necessarily have to you know repeat in that. But I think this area here, this 92 on the uh, and the dollar index is really nice for a reversal. So um, so yeah, let's see what happens anyway. Uh, so that's probably going to be it for me for today. Like I said, we've got plenty, plenty, plenty of um, of videos in the um, in the discussion room uh, that we have to go for, that you have to go through. So how many videos have I done today? Probably about oh, I've done a few. Matter of fact, so you've got um, 11th for January is a gold trade setup. CPR volume divergence entries and trade management that was about maybe about an hour I think I spent on that call and then you've got the 11th of January uh, uh, US dollar Aussie dollar New Zealand dollar uh, diverging trade and that was answering um, jar jar breads um, uh, question and I did another one and actually that's it I did another one on the uh, Aussie yen and the uh, no Aussie Swiss and the dollar yen. So lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, videos to watch today. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll stop with the videos and uh, um, for now, and then um, just give you guys a chance to catch up on on uh, on everything. So uh, so yeah, let's uh, see what happens. And guys, I'll speak to you um, tomorrow, I guess, because it's coming towards the end of the day. And uh, yeah. I'll uh, speak to you tomorrow. Take care.